Hello everybody, this is Pun the Frugal Streamer, and I have been working on a couple different test videos using NVIDIA's encoder, NVENC, and OBS Studio, and I wanted to figure out what I feel is the best settings, at least for me, and probably would be generally for most users uh, for using uh, this for recording. And it's important because a lot of people want to do this with the capabilities of OBS, with overlays, uh, the multi-channel audio, and that sort of thing. So, first of all, there's some disclaimers I need to put out with these videos. First of all, although I do use an Elgato capture card, an HD60 Pro, for this test, I did not use it. Instead, to patch video from my gaming PC to my streaming PC, I used NDI, which is a, a third party plugin that you can get for OBS Studio by going to their GitHub. Uh, the the looking in their forms and finding that thread, going to the GitHub and installing that plugin. Okay, and it is, uh, it does not it allows you to stream video from your gaming PC to streaming PC without using the capture card. So for this purposes, there was no use of the Elgato in rendering and capturing this video. Or whatever, it is strictly the Nvidia encoder. Okay, so what I've done is I've done two one minute clips. Okay, these clips are. Uh, rendered at 1080p 60 frames per second one is using vbr the first one and the second one is using cqp okay cqp is a version or is a parameter within vbr that allows you to set the quality that you want to set and it's typically depending on how much uh compression you want anywhere from uh, i would say 15 up to about 23. I think for streaming, OBS uses 22 is the default, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, generally, most people say for recording, 17 is nominal. Uh, for this purpose, I used 15. Um, the lower the number you go, the more uh, uncompressed video that there is. Uh, and of course, zero would be like your losses. Okay, so, uh, but. With that being said, you have to, that would also incur a lot more processing because, you know, that would just take a lot of processing to do while this video and it may cause lag. Your computer may not be able to handle it. But that being said, I have these two one minute clips. I'm going to allow you to look at them. You decide what you think the best one is. Uh, again, the first one is using VBR, the second one's using the CQP. And uh, then you decide which one, and I will show you the settings afterwards and uh, show you what I feel the best settings are for recording video. Jemand erste Hilfe. Hier, erste Hilfe. Ja, zweite. 
Feindliches Maschinengewehr. All right, so now I've got the two videos. I wanted to show you because I felt to me that the uh, CQP uh, settings seem to make a better quality video. So I wanted to just go through and show you what the output settings for recording are. And as you can see here, um, I've set my rate control uh, to CQP. Um, of course, you see the four different uh, options you have available. Uh, CQP for recording uh, is just a version of VBR, but instead of allowing uh, or setting a bitrate yourself, what you're telling the encoder to do is, okay, I want this quality based on this number, and then it will set bitrate based on what it needs to maintain that uh, parameter. So uh, that is how it you know, essentially works without going into the nitty gritty details of CQP. If you really want to learn about uh, what CQP does, what VBR does, and general compression, I mean, you can Google it. There's a ton of YouTube videos. There's some really good ones that go into detail on talking about, you know, your keyframes, your B frames, your P frames, uh, your, what do you call it, the GOP, uh, so, you know, or, it, 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 or FOP, I think. It goes into talking about all kinds of different uh, ways that these work to give you a better quality video with the least amount of data so that you can stream it and record it without making huge file sizes or sending a lot of data over the internet. And so anyway, so I've got this CQP setting. I've set CQP to 15. Remember, uh, the smaller the number, the bigger the file size, the less compression that it will use, uh, the more processing that it will use to call it to get the picture. Of course, you'll probably have better quality. That's something that you can play around with. Now, my personal settings, I could go down to about 10 without seeing any performance loss. But as soon as I got below 10, I started to see issues with frame skipping, uh, just where the sit processor just couldn't keep up with it. And remember, this is using the GPU encoder on the card, not your CPU per se. Um, so anyway, I've got that. Keyframe is set to auto uh, zero. Uh, my preset here, I've went to high quality. I've used the high profile, um, which seemed to you know, be good. Main high, both pretty much the same, but just to try to get as good of quality as I could, I set it to high. And then another thing that you could do here is you can set this level. Now I've left it at 4.1, uh, but you can go up to 5.1. But one key thing with any VPR that you're doing, any version of VBR, is you want to do two pass encoding because that really does make it different. Uh, now, if you've if you're running multiple video cards, okay, then you could choose a GPU, but I'm only running one, so that would be zero. Uh, GPU zero. If I had two, if I was running an SLI configuration, it would be, you know, zero and one I could choose, but I've only got one video card. So. And then the B frames, I'm using two. Um, this is all default. Uh, so I don't know. B frames, uh, once again, you go into learning more about this compression and you'll learn more about how the system or the encoder uses B frames, uh, which is more or less kind of like copies of a scene um but things aren't changing so it uses these frames over and over again um i'm using two that's what I, that's what I've, I've you know said which is the default and i don't see any issues with it and that's what most people use so that is really the settings that i'm using um a lot of people are doing the vbr and then going and changing bit rate to up to 50 or 60k uh 50 or 60,000. And um, which is kind of similar to what NVIDIA's GeForce Experience or Shadowplay um, uses for their uh, recording. But I just cannot get quite the quality that Shadowplay does or with using CQP and setting a quality setting. And 
So 15 works, 10 works for me. Uh, 10 is actually a nicer quality video for me, but some people might not be able to run that. And that's something you're gonna have to try to test that yourself. But anyway, so that is what I'm using for my settings for my recording. Uh, you know, and if you got any questions about it, let me know. Um, there is other people out there that have different settings. Uh, I know I've seen a guy that says to set bit rate to 1000. And then, um, and this is for X264. Go and you set X264, go into VBR, set the bit rate to 1000, and then set a manual CRF. Similar, same thing, you're setting a rate factor um down to you know like 15 17 something like that and then allow the encoder to choose the bit rate it needs to process and that seemed to work out pretty good too but with x264 you really need to have a pretty decent processor to do 1080p 60 recording without a serious amount of processing loss unfortunately uh, it takes a pretty good cpu to be able to do that um and even with my eight core uh, FX8350 at 1080p60, um, it it causes a lot. Uh, you know, it, it can cause some encoding issues. And so this is what I like. I like trying to use NVENC because it really takes, I mean, the maximum I was using was 21% uh, CPU while doing um, NVENC by, you know, 60, 70% uh, while using X264. So anyway, guys, that is it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. hope it helps you out. Uh, go out there and try it and see what your system can handle with NVENC. Uh, another thing, just to give you a heads up real quick. The video card that I'm using to do this is an entry-level card, and it's, you know, three or four years old now. The GTX 750 Ti is actually what I'm using in my stream rig, and I bought it because purely to use for NVENC, uh, to use that encoder. Um, so it is the one of the older versions of the NVIDIA encoding. Newer versions might give you better results, and you might be able to do more with it. So with that being said, guys, that is it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. I do appreciate you coming out, watching this video. And if you liked it, like I said, uh, hit that like, share it, subscribe, and I hope to see what you can come up with for your recordings using OBS Studio in the NVIDIA encoder. All right, guys, this is Pun Frugal Streamer. And we'll see you out there. Bye-bye.